This is a video of my cat. Um, actually, it's a video of both of my cats. Uh, the other one will show up in a little while. Uh, first of all, welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. The point of this is not the cat in the video. The point of the episode today is actually what's right in front of me here, and it is AMD Fusion. In front of me, I have the E350 APU. So the APU is what that acquisition of ATI was all about. The APU combines a GPU, which is a graphics processing unit, as well as a CPU, which is a central processing unit, into one chip. So we're finally there. The, the, system is, the system on a chip is becoming more and more possible in a desktop or netbook or notebook PC environment. So what's important about this video clip behind me is that it is a 1080p file. It is a completely uncompressed file and it is playing at 1080p with GPU assist allowing it to play very smoothly at full frame rate at all times. Now that's pretty cool but we've had that before. So here's another really interesting thing about the APU that I'm going to show you in just a moment. This is Big Buck Bunny. So I've got this running in 1080p mode. Now, if you've got an older computer, an older laptop, or you know someone with an older computer, then you probably have heard them complain at some point about not being able to watch HD movies on YouTube. So the reason for that is that Flash Player, up until recently, A, well, okay, up until recently, it's always very demanding to run HD videos in Flash. And up until recently, GPU-assisted decoding was not supported. So while I could play a video from my desktop, like the cat video before, by using my GPU, or in this case, an APU, because the GPU is now built in, it wouldn't work for Flash. With the 10.2 update, I can actually use my APU, a very low-cost solution, very low-power cons consumption solution, to run HD videos on YouTube, even if I put them in full-screen mode. Pretty sweet, huh? So let's talk about our system config here today. This is a Gigabyte uh, GAE350N USB 3. So it's a mini ITX motherboard, although AMD Fusion solutions are available in a variety of form factors, including, as I mentioned briefly before, notebooks, netbooks, uh, here's one from ASUS. This is the E35M1-M. So this is a micro ATX board, which actually gives you, you can see it has a, a passive heatsink to cool the APU, two DIMM slots. It's got, and this is cool, uh, the chipset that's, that's running for, with the Fusion APU actually supports SATA 3 6 gigabit per second. So you can see here I have five SATA 3 6 gig per second ports, and we actually have the same support for SATA 3 on the Mini ITX board. Although this full size one also gives us a PCIe 16x slot, a 1x slot, and a couple PCI slots. So we have as much expansion and functionality as a full fledged PC board, but the difference is that the cost is very low and you still have the firepower that you need in order to run HD video, which is so important to mainstream users. So here on the back, you can see we got HDMI out, DVI and VGA all as options. And then you've got all the latest connectivity like USB 3 and gigabit ethernet. So that's pretty neat as well. So our gigabyte board, let's get back to that one. The way I have it configured right now is with only two gigs of RAM. I have it running off a very, very low end power supply because under load, this whole thing pulls only a handful of watts from the wall. It's very, very power efficient. And I'm also running an SSD because with a Fusion APU, you actually are well on your way with some of them passive, like the ASUS board that I showed you guys before with the big passive heatsink on it. Some of them run off little tiny fans and heatsinks, but either way, with a low wattage power supply, an efficient power supply like 80 plus, an SSD and a Fusion board, you've got a very silent HTPC, HTPC without spending a lot of money. It's great. Now let's talk about the competitive landscape. So Fusion is not the lowest price uh, basic PC platform on the market and it's not the highest price one either. I actually don't have any pure Intel Atom with Intel integrated graphics solutions in front of me and the reason for that is I don't really believe they're competitive. The Intel Atom without a third party graphics chip is actually not capable of playing HD video on YouTube or any of those things that are going to be 
essential for anyone that you're gonna be providing even a computer with basic functionality to. So the ones that I do have here today, I've got the two Fusion boards, and then I have a couple of interesting solutions. So this is the AT3 Ion T-I from ASUS. This is an ITX board, and it also has a similar feature set to an AMD Fusion board. The difference is that it does not support SATA 3 6 gigabit per second because the chipset does not have that functionality. It does have higher power consumption, although only I mean, we're talking on the order of a few watts, but I guess that would work out to up to 10% higher power consumption, depending on how you want to look at it. They're very close. And it does not use an APU. So it actually has two dedicated chips. It has an Intel Atom CPU, which is a dual core with hyperthreading, and then it also has an NVIDIA ION first generation GPU. So that's that one. And then to its left, uh, your right, I suppose, this is the AT5 ION N... T-I. That's right, that's the part number. So this is, once again, this is a pat. these are both passively cooled boards. This guy supports a couple of SODIMs, which really isn't going to mean anything in terms of performance when we're talking about these kinds of parts. It has a similar feature set in terms of I.O., but the big difference for this guy is that it uses next generation ION. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys um, the same HD videos running off an ION solution, and basically this one is priced more this one is priced less than Fusion. Fusion falls somewhere in the middle, and a Pure Atom solution, which once again, I haven't even brought out to show you guys because I think it's pointless, is lower still. So now we've got our Ion Next Generation. So uh, you could call it Ion 2, but it's technically not correct. So we've got our Next Generation Ion solution also playing back, 1080p video here. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, close that down. So something that you may have to do when you install your codecs is enable GPU hardware assist. That is something that I did have to do to get my videos to play back smoothly. And then now I'm going to bring up good old Big Buck Bunny here. And you can see that in windowed mode, it does run. This is once again with GPU assist. And I'm going to go ahead and fire that up in full screen. Now, you can see we get some stuttering on NVIDIA ION, but once I make the ads go away, and once the toolbar goes, or once the uh, progress bar goes away at the bottom, see, you can see the frame rate actually jumps right up. So that's one of the issues that I did run into on the ION platform that I did not encounter on the AMD platform. It's likely just a driver thing one way or the other. So the last thing we're going to do today is we're going to share with you some benchmarks between the AMD Fusion solution, the NVIDIA ION second generation solution, as well as the NVIDIA ION first generation solution. So the benchmarks are pretty simple. Most of them are pass-fail. So for YouTube, 1080p, does it work? Fusion, yes. Menus and ads do not affect it. ION 2, I'm just going to call it that, okay, yes, but the menus and ads do affect performance. ION 1 actually worked just fine without menus and ads affecting performance. So how about gaming? Because you can actually play older games on these platforms, and I'm talking older games, okay? Fusion happens to be DirectX 11 ready, although I did do a video on my blog where I tried to run Hawks 2 on it, and I didn't have too much success due to the CPU and the GPU being a little bit underpowered for running the latest DirectX 11 games with tessellation and you know everything else at 1080p. It's just not going to happen. But okay, 3D Mark 06 is probably a good thing to look at. So the Fusion solution scores nine, about 1,900 3D Marks. The Ion 2 solution scores about 2,600 3D Marks, and the Ion 1 solution scores about 1,400 3D Marks. So that puts the Fusion right in and where its price bracket belongs in between these two other solutions. Okay, 1080p without being on YouTube. Yes, they all work 100% just fine in that, and I dropped my notes, so I'll be back in a moment. Yeah, I'm back. Got my notes. Okay, so I used Handbrake to re-encode a video file of my, oops, I got Big Buck Bunny, well, of my cat video, and then I recorded the average frame rate in the output file at the end. So the Fusion solution, bearing in mind that is a dual core processor with no hyper-threading, ran at 1.62 FPS, whereas the Ion 1 solution, which uses an older Intel Atom chip, it uses a 330 versus the D525, ran at 1.82 FPS, and the Ion 2 ran at 2.57 FPS. So thank you for checking out this 
video featuring AMD Fusion, the APU, which could very well be the future of many devices that you use, whether they're in this form factor, even smaller, thinner, lighter netbooks, and uh, even, I mean, the sky's the limit for something like this because we're down, we're consolidated right down to a single chip for the CPU and the GPU. The biggest advantage that I haven't talked about probably as much as I should have against a dual chip solution from Intel and Nvidia paired up is that because it's a single chip, it is much more efficient. So it is more power efficient, which in a desktop context, we're talking a couple watts, probably doesn't mean a whole lot, but in a netbook context, a couple of watts could be the difference between six hours and seven hours of battery life. So it could be an enormous difference. So don't forget to subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips and thank you for watching.